way science has traditionally been done for centuries is you work very hard in a lab or in the field and you gather a tiny little bit of data and then you have a lot of time to go back and analyze that small amount of data. The problem with modern science is that the, the tools we have available for generating data, for gathering data, ha have you know, exploded exponentially in terms of their productivity. So we now get terabytes uh, of data, sometimes per minute or per day, and it's, it's not feasible for, for a single human being or even a team of human beings to sit down and go through that by hand. So we need completely new approaches. The, the tools that IBM is providing us with are exactly what we need to be able to take these colossal data sets and make sense of them in an automated way. What the analytical tools provide for us is a framework for mining what we really care about out of these colossal data sets. What one specific area that I work in myself is, is in, in neuroscience. We have magnets over at Robarts Research Institute. We, we generate you know, terabytes of data uh, images of blood flow in the brain, and we'd like to turn that into some sort of model of how the brain's working. And analyzing that just by looking at that individual, it, it's just not feasible, there's too much. So, so the resources, that, that the computational resources that we're getting uh, will allow us to automate that analysis to a point where we can hopefully boil down what we see into simple models. These facilities, these resources that we're getting are, are enablers across almost all of the research disciplines on campus, whether that's science, social science, business, uh, humanities, all of these areas can, can benefit from big data analytics.